That's weird. So, Jim, you're back. Yeah, I'm back on the cuddle couch. You're back. I'm I'm relieved, to be quite honest. I don't know what was going on, but there w there was a period of time where a good friend and colleague of mine, Andre, was very worried about yeah, you as well. Tina too. Tina too. Or Tina boy. Yeah. I think. Well, she's and affectionately known as. They came in, they did a broadcast, and they left, and I don't know where they went. I don't know if you have. We probably can't pull to that broadcast yeah. right now, but that was one of the funnier broadcasts I've ever <laughs> like seen. That. Me, I, I was watching it with Cole Camp Lee, Brad Koslick. And Bart Scott, who's another guy, uh, I don't know if that's not, I know it's Bart. I'm thinking Scott, but I don't think that's his last name. That's a Jets linebacker's last name. Yeah. Uh, but another really cool guy, Bart, at Cole's house. And we were hysterical. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, yeah. Well, we've talked about doing the fictional type stuff before. And, you know, it. just like making that. it like a skit type thing. Not, not quite so much for DTLT today, but just in general to be broadcasting more stuff like this. And really play around with and the make media. it fun yeah well the whole idea too that uh it kind of was for me nostalgic for summer of oblivion yeah when we were just doing that stuff every day yeah julia tweeted me at one point she had just seen the thumbnail and she said are y'all recreating summer of oblivion and i was like oh not yeah. quite but it felt yeah. like that yeah I and mean, just how much pressure that was too <laughs> we'll need fun. more props in here if we do more of that. well it's funny i mean since you're not doing a very good job with the interview <laughs> maybe i'll help you along you sure. know when i went to penn state and, uh, and I was talking to them, and the people at Penn State are awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, big shout out to Cole Camp Lease and the work he's doing there. Yeah. Um, Alan Gor Gorky, uh, Brad Koslick, uh, Chris Millay, uh, Stubbs is a guy I met. I mean, there's all sorts of awesome people there. Now, who uh, Robin the To Go. Who was the audience that you were speaking to there? Was it. Uh, instructional them, tech folk, or was it IT people? I think it was a lot faculty? of instructional tech, some faculty, and a few librarians. A few librarians. The librarians there had a lot of great questions, and they were really fascinated about this idea of the archive. And I think they were really piqued by the questions I was raising about Google and um, Google sure. advertising company versus a kind of archival, yeah. um, you know, live, you know, kind of archival public welfare kind of uh, program that we see our librarians, at least our public libraries and our local community libraries. And so mm -hmm. there's some dissonance, and I think the librarians picked up on that. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of uh, cool folks. And it was kind of a mixed group. And uh, the reception of it seemed pretty well. I mean, the fact is, is the hour presentation I gave was kind of the cap of a kind of a, almost an eight-hour day of talking to people. Right. I saw you were broad they broadcasted yeah. some of it on Ustream and on the radio. And It was great. We talked portfolios. Mm -hmm. We talked. Um, digital storytelling and their new media. They have a media commons that's doing awesome stuff. Yeah. And uh, we talked, I did an interview for the PSU Buzz, which is kind of like where they blog their daily buzz about what happened that day, and that was pretty cool. And, right. you know, it just was cool. Like, people wanted to talk, and they were interested in the stuff, and, you know, we share a lot of the same interests yeah. in terms of what they're doing there with their blogging system, what we're doing here. But what I think you'll really like, Timmy, is, like, the stuff you've been doing mm -hmm. with DTLT Today, um, the stuff we've all been experimenting with over the class and beyond with the radio mm -hmm. and with DS106 TV was really piquing their interest. Yeah. I mean, they were really excited about this to the point where it was a really good like, meeting before the presentation. It was like a two-hour meeting with the Media Commons group. Sure. And so they're really cool. The Media Commons group is basically something set up um, by ETS, which used to be run by Cole, is now being run by Alan Gorky, and I think it's led by Chris Millay. Okay. Chris Millay and his group basically has created a whole series of different media spaces around campus and on other campuses that anyone could go in and create. Right. There's a final cut, there's cameras, there's a laptop, whatever you want, it's there, do it. Right. And there's people there to help you, to show you how to do it, and they're all over campus. So yeah. it's not just one big place. So we got talking about this, and one really cool story that came out while we were talking was they have these little recording boxes. They almost look like tall phone booths that you go in, they're all set up, you go in there and you record. Nice. So the idea was, why don't you guys do something like DS106 TV or DTLT Today or DS106 Radio and you put a one button thing where anyone could go on any kind of like um, phone booth that you set around campus and broadcast. That would be intense. And you have channels from all over campus that people are just stepping in and broadcasting. Well, so we were going crazy during this discussion at the possibilities because rappers are using these things all over campus to record really? raps. That's so cool. Isn't that trippy? Yeah. So why not take advantage of that and make it part of the kind of ecosystem of communicating at PSU? Well, what it reminds me of, somebody tweeted this out the other day, this idea, um, 
you know, Grant's been working on this PBX system, which yes. will basically allow people to call in from a telephone number. The party and, line. Yeah, the party line. So it's be this conference line that would automatically go live to the DS-106 radio. Yeah. And someone said, as soon as we get the 800 number, we should have a like a thousand postcards printed up with that phone number on there and some basic instructions awesome. and just send them all over the place random addresses just random spots and locations just leave cards places with this phone number people see it and just all of a sudden like can you imagine listening to the radio and anybody is just popping up on there hey what's this what's going on <laughs> telling their stories it's like it's like an audio version of post secret you know? I love it. I mean, I love the idea, and I talked about that a bit because I remember that, yeah. like, you know, on the, the few pay phones that are left. I also like that, like, radio and TV, it's retro. Yeah. Like, now it's radio, TV, and phone booths. It is. And, like, you get a little sticker, and you stick it on the phone booth, call this number, mm -hmm. and get on the radio now. Yeah. And, like, someone does it just by chance and is like, hello? Yeah. And, like, just think about what that would mean to the right. dynamic of the radio station. Well, and, you know... I, I know Penn State gets awesome. excited about this. Uh, Cole was on the radio last night, and he was sort of talking about this idea that we need to get more flexible. We need to be flexible and open to these ideas. And traditionally, the university has not been that the case with that. Yeah. You know, I, when I came to Mary Washington, part of what drove me to this department was that it felt more like a research and development facility where you were free and open to explore these ideas. And a lot yeah. of people, I think, don't get that kind of freedom and it's unfortunate because going forward I think more and more that's where the amazing ideas are gonna lie is in the spaces and the nooks where you can start you know playing around that playground and there's no two ways about it we got lucky when we hired you and that's really a kind of offshoot of DS 106 and I think what Penn State University is going through right now is interesting because like us, at the same time, we were developing a lot of the same tools. Although well, they did it for a far bigger number, right. they enterprised it right away. I mean, they're really all over that stuff. So PSU blogs blew up. You know, they have thousands and thousands of posts, thousands and thousands of users. I mean, that's a successful system. Mm -hmm. But then you have to support that system, and a lot of your resources that went to create it are supported. So they're in the transition right now of kind of saying, okay, what can we cut? What can we keep to right. open up that experimental space? Because PSU has been great. Penn State has been amazing mm -hmm. at doing innovative work on the fly. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think that's right now kind of like we were last year with you were still UMW blogs, DS one oh six was our kind of way for us as a group and beyond to kind of say, okay, what's next? Yeah. Start and kind of engage around, it. Start playing around and figure out what's gonna And happen. we had no plan like, okay, out of this we want something like web radio or web video to come. It just no. happened. Yeah. Exactly. And no that's what they need. That they're going to do too, I imagine. Well, and what's exciting about when they do it is because they have such a huge audience and they can yeah. dedicate the people to developing this kind of stuff, you're going to see some amazing things coming out of Penn State for real. Like, you yeah. know, you imagine like with us, we've just been, you know, playing around. Grant Potter created the radio by himself. I played around with the TV thing and we've been doing that. But it's, you know, it's sort of a ragtag group that's just been <laughs> playing around with this stuff. That's Penn right. State, I mean, they'll be able to throw 30 developers at this and start making amazing things. They do bring, I mean, if they start developing for open source platforms that we're familiar with, for example, right. which will be unnamed, I mean, <laughs> the amount of resources they could throw at something like that is impressive, and I think it would really make the educational world stop for a second and say, oh, maybe we should be looking at this open source application versus this vendor solution, sure. because you have, you know, a series of crack developers, and not only would there be crack developing, but also you'd have crack professors and high-profile researchers, and you know, Penn State's an interesting place because it's, you know, one of the few public ivies, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like the UC systems and stuff. And, you know, you want to believe in the vision of a public ivy because it's like the idea of you get the prestige and the education that you would get maybe at an ivy, but, you know, it's kind of more of a level playing field. It was right. kind of the vision of the public education, mm -hmm. which, you know, I still somewhat subscribe to that vision, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, education always gets, you know, when you get deep enough, it's all a business, but, right. you know, you want to believe that that, and, like, you know, they have, what, 94,000 students? What I like about Penn State University versus UMW is there couldn't be two more opposite schools. <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> We're both public. Yeah. But one's a 4,000 liberal arts kind of, you know, gone through four, four presidents in the last five years, not sure where it is, is still trying to figure out what great liberal arts means. I mean, mm -hmm. we have this kind of real identity crisis. Whereas Penn State has anything but. Right. It's like Joe Paterno. Yeah. You know, like Penn State. It's yeah. like the thing. 94,000 students, <laughs> you know. 
And so I like how we're paralleling Penn State in some weird kind of remora sense. But then, I mean, the thing is, it's it's not always about the numbers and the money. Yeah. It's that flexibility. And the bigger the ship is, the harder it is to turn. Yeah. And I think that's some of the challenge that Cole sees um, in steering his group in different directions. Well, and he's been impressive about it in the past, and I'm sure he yeah. will. Because, you know, think of other PAC or Big Ten schools or whoever who are doing stuff, and it's like, Ohio State? Like, I don't know of other schools that big. Yeah that are kind of doing stuff on such an institutional scale. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to watch them. And, you know, Penn State's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a big school. Yeah. And there's a lot of kind of, uh, it seems like when you go on, it's a city within itself. Uh -huh. But I actually did get to go to see Beaver Stadium. Did you? I took a picture with Joe Paterno's statue. Nice. <laughs> and uh, it was fun. You know, I actually had a friend who went, Jesse Pepper, who went to Penn State. And so I had been there a couple of times as an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was so big and so different from what I remember it mm -hmm. 25 years ago, however long that was, you know, 20 years ago, that it was like going home, that was going to a very different place again. Um, so, notice I said it was almost like going home again. Right. How <laughs> do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't know. You might want to search your feelings. I have to search. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> search your feelings. So, interviewer, any more questions for me? Uh, well, the only other thing I was going to mention was Brad Koslick, you mentioned him. Uh, the great he, the, Brad Koslick. Yeah, so That's actually officially his name now. It's the, the great. The, he added it on <laughs> the beginning. The two beginnings. Okay. The great and then Brad Koslick. I'll make sure to edit that part out yeah. so that uh, no errors there. It's but the great underscore. Underscore. So the great is one first name. The great. Is there a space underscore. <laughs> No, it's the underscore great. And then Brad is his middle name. Koslick is his last name. I'm going to need you to throw that yeah, out. Yeah, maybe okay. we'll throw up a, a visual. Okay, great. With that. Uh, but anyway, so he commented on my blog because uh, after he met you, he found me on Twitter and he was reading some of my posts about this live streaming stuff. And then he saw the post where I talk about Media U, the idea that I had of getting away from iTunes yeah. U and doing stuff on the web. And he said, well, Penn State's kind of doing something similar. And so it, it, what it turns out is that, so they've got their blogs at PSU, which is powered by movable type. That's right. And they're integrating the the media and audio stuff into that so that you know each blog has these media posts that automatically um, get fed into iTunes which is amazing it's not quite the idea that I have in terms of using WordPress to do it but they're doing it right now and so it's like these blogs are powering iTunes U but they don't have to deal with iTunes U at, at all. all it just gets fed in there yeah. and I think they figured that out like a year and a half ago or two years ago and you know that's the thing I mean you have CUNY working on it with Boone and Matt Gold and mm -hmm. Mikhail and um, Luke Walter. So you have a lot of great development going on at CUNY, a lot of great development going on at UBC with Brian Lamb and Novak um, and his group, which is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And now, potentially, with WordPress, you might have other folks coming on who yeah. have a lot of development chops. We've been doing our stuff in terms of just experimenting with it. But, I mean, I think there are points now of some critical mass around kind of thinking about how a media situation where we start sharing and building because your media you also does something that I don't know if they're doing with movable type but the idea behind it is you build a site and that site becomes kind of like a media profile for a class right here's all your episodes on YouTube here's all the videos you want to share here's all the audio you want to link mm -hmm. it comes to be kind of like a visually aesthetically pleasing way of designing a syllabus around or a class around media yeah. as well as pages and posts and stuff and it means and that's a cool little twist to it and and you don't have to log it down so people who aren't actually students can still go in there and consume that same content they could go Absolutely. back and you know track the course through the lectures and the videos and the posts that you and the idea is mashing up the reaction to that media with the students which really brings me back to some of the stuff Martha did with DS106 the idea of you have the assignment but then you have the reactions to that assignment or who people who did that assignment right under it exactly. like so you have the media in the class but hopefully then you can aggregate blogs about that media uh -huh. and students who talked about that see yeah. that's where you start you to can get aggregate into that the blogs you space. can aggregate the social network information network, that's the yep, beauty exactly. of that's all the stuff that iTunes you left out it's the zone <laughs> little container where you can't get to any of that other crucial information yeah and I think iTunes you is a real big you know I think it's a failure uh, in the larger picture when you think about what it did for delivering media yeah. for universities. I mean, all it did is, is it provided a nice marketplace for those who were willing yeah. to get in. I mean, it, Most it, of it the was stuff about in there is locked down anyway. It was about convenience for the user, I guess, but, you know. Yeah. It never proved to be much. And, you know, 
I think it's time, like, it's never proved to be much, but because Apple was in the market, mm -hmm. it seemed like very few other people tried to. Right. There's Cultura. <laughs> But as much as I hear about Cultura, and I know the show is not about Cultura, and we probably have to go, but I mean, Cultura is like the open source solution that wasn't. Right. Like it's always like it's open source, but yeah. they'll have a salesman on the phone trying it's, to sell yeah. you. On it. Like we tried to deal with them, and it was really terrible. Yeah. The business they gave us, and and I almost felt like you know what. I, a, you're not open source, and B, your claim to be open source seems to always be followed up with a pitch. Yeah. And a pitch that almost makes it like it'd be, it's open source, but that's way too much trouble. Let's try this. So I'm, maybe I should well, do my research and see what really is there. What are, I mean, I've heard a lot about them. A lot of people use them, but like, what's called Torah's deal? And the, and the thing deal? is, I don't necessarily have a problem with third parties who take open source products and they add on to them and charge for them. I mean, the people who develop WordPress do that with video press, mm -hmm. with the automatic stuff. But at the same time, automatic's not like saying, hey, we noticed you downloaded WordPress. We'd love to have a salesman talk to you about our, you know, our backup solutions for your university or something <laughs> like that. You know, I mean, more and more it seems like the ship yeah. might be steering that way. But right now, you know, it's less so, you know, that's not the core idea of what they're going for. Well, and VideoPress is not... Uh I mean, video press is open source code. The 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 code is open source, but yeah. the solution that they sell people is sixty dollars a year or something for people to use it on their own without having to install something on their server. Oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah. It's a paid service that they open source the background code to, but at the same time, it's like okay, they open source the code, but the code hasn't been updated in two years. So the question is like. Are you using two-year-old code on your website, or have you been continually playing with this product and you just threw that out there two and a half years ago and then didn't do anything yeah. since? And I'd like to see how that works with Kaltura too, like what they're doing in yeah. the kind of open source field. It would be interesting. Well, it's good to have you back, Jim. Well, yeah, it's good to be back. Good. Back home. Back home. Home. And hey, Bob Where Stock. You Next week's going to be interesting. Yes. We have a lot of people coming into Fredericksburg. Yeah. We're getting ready for Baba Stock. A lot of our DS-106 natives That's showing right. up here. And so. we're going to be doing stuff. Next week is going to be a kind of marathon of media. Yeah. So get ready. We're coming at you. The TV, the radio, we're going to do it all. We own you. <laughs> the vertical and the horizontal. Do it with me, Tibby. The vertical and the horizontal. The horizontal. DS-106. See ya. Thank you.